So the pelvic floor, we've talked a lot about pelvic floor, so now we need to think about how we get our pelvic floors working. So we really need to think about, well, we've talked a little bit about why already, why we need to do them, how we do them, when and where, because if we don't fit these into a bit of a schedule, you're never actually going to do it. One of the things that I, I hope you get out of tonight is it's not a one size fits all for um, a pelvic floor training program and it's not just about strength. It can be about how quickly you can turn the muscles on. It can be about being able to relax the muscles. So if you are having some problems, you actually need to go and see someone to have a chat with them and get them to actually assess your muscles. And pelvic floor physiotherapists, we actually do a master's level training in assessing people's muscles so we can internally assess women and men. And there's also some perineal ultrasound measures with men that we use as well to see what your muscles can do because it is not a one size fits all approach. Everybody, it's the same as if someone tears a hamstring. You can't just do the same thing for every person. So how do we do this? We need to be able to contract and relax. So first of all, you've got to get a bit of an awareness of the area. Now, I always joke around with the guys that I see that have um, prostate surgery that you guys are really good at knowing what, what that area is about because for the, from the time you're able to take, have a nappy off, you basically have your hand there. Whereas women, anyone who's had a son knows that, um, but whereas women, we actually don't think about that area. We're not, not encouraged to know about that area. So sometimes your sensation of that area is only um, very little until you have a problem and then you have to think about it until we go to have babies. So if you think about when you use your muscles to stop the flow of urine, that can be one way, as a woman and a man, of how these muscles work. And it's like a squeezing and a lifting underneath. Um, if men think about when you're trying to squeeze that last few drops of urine out, that's your pelvic floor muscles doing that as well. What you do need to do is have them come on at the right time. We are gonna practice in a minute, but strength training is really important. So the same as with a, an injured hamstring, you need to do some sets. Now, for example, an optimum strength training regime may be to get to six to 10 second holds, 10, 10 times, three sets a day. But if you can only hold it for one or two seconds, that's where you start and you'll gradually build up. We know that once you get to six or 10 seconds, then we're getting some building of muscles. You need to use these functional, as we talked about, before you cough, before you sneeze, when you're changing position. I'm gonna get everybody to do something now, is to sit down in your chair and think about relaxing your muscles and then just stand up. So everybody stand up. And now sit down again. This is what I always do in, with my pelvic floor patients. Now let's think about where these muscles are inside and I want you to engage your pelvic floor muscles and then push through your legs as you stand up. So as you come down, I want you to squeeze your pelvic floor and then push through your heels to stand up. And I don't know whether it feels any different to you, but I know that you actually feel like everything's a little bit more together. Yeah? No? <laughs> Maybe you're all just so together that you don't feel it. When someone comes in with pure, with uh, prolapse symptoms, continence symptoms, and I know that they can actually correctly contract their pelvic floor, when I teach them to do that, it's like a aha moment. This is what I'm meant to be doing. Instead of every time you're standing up, <sighs> and pushing down. So, it's, and it's, it's the, the one exercise that I routinely give a man before he has prostate surgery, because every single time they come in after their surgery, they'll, they'll say, I stand up and that's when I leak. And you're like, well, often they'll go like this, <laughs> after they stand up and that's when they will leak. So you've got to teach them to everything in moderation and to gently, gently engage as needed. Then you've got your sports specific training. It's all very well and good to be able to hold your pelvic floor 10 seconds, 10 times, to do your strength program. But if it doesn't come on when you jump, it, you're gonna wet yourself. So it's about training it to come on at the right time at the right amount. And that can be, I train people doing jumps and skips and things like that, especially if they've had babies and they're having some pelvic floor issues and we're training them to get back to running or to whatever sport they do. You actually train them up to do what they need to do. It's the same as any sport, rehabilitating. So where, how can you remember to do it? We always remember to brush our teeth. Well, I know I do, most people do. And if you've got children, you try and get them to. <laughs> so at least twice a day, hopefully, you get 
you brush your teeth. So I always say do two sets in the morning when you brush your teeth, do one set at night or breakfast, lunch and dinner. Use an app on your phone. There, there are lots of apps. There's one I think called My Kegel. There's, there's a pregnancy app that the Continence Foundation have that you can use um, for remembering to do your exercises or just set a reminder. We're so digital these days. So if you've got a phone that you can put a reminder on it, you know, four o'clock every afternoon, it gives you a ding ding and you can ignore it, but it's there and it's keeping it in your mind. Because unless we do things in a diary type of way, you don't remember to do it. So we're gonna practice. So sitting there, I want everybody to just gently relax and lean a little bit forward so you can feel the chair underneath your perineum and, you, and your, your elbows, almost like a guy who's sitting on the toilet, you know, with a newspaper, you're nice and relaxed. You wanna relax your breathing. One of the biggest problems with exercise and with doing pelvic floor exercises is people use too much of their tummy. You might have seen some of those ads a couple of years ago for tenor where everybody was doing this when they did their pelvic floor exercises. <laughs> it was like they, they had to have their eyebrows go up. Well, you don't. I could be doing pelvic floor exercise now and you don't know. You might see a tiny drawing in of tummy, but you shouldn't be seeing any, <gasps> it shouldn't be holding everything up because as soon as you let your breath go, <sighs> everything's gonna go. So you've got to be able to isolate this muscle. When you're actually contracting your pelvic floor, it is just those muscles working. So if you close your eyes and imagine that you've got your perineum sitting on, so that's the underneath part sitting on the chair, and I want you to imagine that all of that is drawing up inside you and then releasing. Nothing should be happening here. Sorry for the microphone then. Your upper tummy muscles actually are nice and relaxed because as soon as you pull them in, you're actually increasing your pressure down. So it's squeezing underneath. Some of the ways that I um, uh, like to tell, tell guys is to lift your scrotum as if you're walking into really icy cold water. Um, often they go, oh yeah, I know exactly what to do. And one of the other things they found actually recently from doing some research is that if you tell a man to retract his penis, originally they said shorten, but as one of the guys in the audience said, you can never tell a man to shorten the penis, just tell him to retract it, because they'll never do it otherwise. So if you can't get the sensation of what your bladder is and, and, and stopping um, urine, maybe you've got some sort of sensation of what your bowel area is, and you can think about squeezing your anus. And obviously that's not gonna be optimal for around your urethra, but at least it gives you a little bit of a sensation of what's happening, and they should all work together. It's not like you can go one, two, three. It all works as one lift. Okay, one of the things I like to do with patients is to give them some sort of visual cues. One of them is the reverse of the drop of water. So your muscles, it's like everything's coming up in reverse of the drop and then when they relax, everything's coming back out and the ripples are coming back out into the ocean. I don't know if that makes any sense. The other one is a clock face. So I imagine with your pelvis that your six o'clock is your pubic bone and midnight is your tailbone and then your nine and three are your side walls of your pelvis. So when you do a pelvic floor contraction, it's not just a lift, it's a squeeze together, front to back and lift up. So it's a squeeze and lift because we're trying to narrow the gap which the bladder can come down and we're trying to lift everything up. So it's a squeeze and lift. Okay, so we probably should think about Having a little practice again, <clears throat> I want everybody to think about totally relaxing and thinking about either your clock or your reverse drop of water. I want everybody to think about squeeze and lift as fast as you can, if you can hold it again and squeeze again. And I keep saying to you, squeeze until you can't anymore and then release. But as you're doing that, you should still be able to talk. So one of the ways that you can make sure that you can do that is count. So I would say, tell people to squeeze and lift to Three, squeeze a bit more and a bit more and a bit more and then fully relax. Then there's different type of exercises. That's your strengthening. Then you might think about, well, when I cough and sneeze, it has to come on really quickly. So it needs to be a quick squeeze and lift. So one of the other exercises we get, give, get people to do, and this is the only one you can do at the traffic lights, is your quick on, off, on, off. And that's to get it coming on all at once really quickly. Then you can think about more of your endurance type hold, so a longer hold, and this might be, as Ian was saying before, when you've got the key in the lock, you might gently just need to hold it on. Think about what you're gonna cook for dinner, distract yourself from the fact that you need to go to the toilet. 
and then gently go on. So the, the muscle is the same as any other muscle. It needs to have endurance, strength, bulk, and be able to function at the right time. If you're unsure, get yourself assessed because a lot of people come to me and they say, I've got a weak pelvic floor, I'm wetting myself. And actually, no, they don't have a weak pelvic floor. It's just that it's not relaxing. You've got to make sure you can relax as well. It's really important, and Ian was saying this as well, you don't put up with symptoms. You don't have to. There's lots of help out there. And it can be as simple as someone saying to you, actually, you're just using your tummy too much, or you're not totally relaxing, or, or the muscle just needs to be a bit quicker. And it's something that you can practice the same as any other skill that you need to learn. So I hope that's given you a little bit of an um, idea about how to do exercises and that you really need to think about it as one size doesn't fit all, but there are some guidelines around strength, three sets of the strengthening a day, which I put in here before, which was your six to 10 second holds, 10 reps, three times a day for strengthening, making sure you're fully relaxing in between. Using your muscles, the most important thing is using them as you do things, as you stand up like we did before, as you're lifting up your children, grandchildren, boxes at work, um, as you're rolling over in bed, as you're coughing and sneezing. Okay. Thank you.